Just a little more jiggery. Notice how um, amphibious. Cool for the job today is going to be Big Red. What are you doing? I was just trying to get an idea where some of the bullet joints are going to go. Um, in relationship to the stud layout on that wall, I'm wondering if they should be somewhat right underneath and line up with the studs. I don't know if it has to. This, this yeah. wall between the bathroom and kitchen? I was figuring out the stud layout on that wall, and then I was like, how are you going to lay out with the floor joists going across the top? You want the floor joists to be right on top of the studs? Can we make that happen? I don't even know. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Welcome to our channel. I'm Kathy and that's Rich and we're building an earth sheltered concrete dome home here in the Adirondacks of New York State. In our last video we started framing only to find out that we needed to do some plumbing first. So today we're finally getting to the framing. But framing square walls in a curved dome comes with its own set of challenges. I made these first batch of studs a little bit longer to compensate for the floor that might be a little bit off. Um, and I was able to do that really quickly by making a little saw stop. Just a little more jiggery to make sure that all my beams come out the same. I tried to pick the best and straightest ones because these are the kitchen wall cabinets or the kitchen cabinets are going on that wall so all right walls ready to be framed this looks great honey this is going to be fan tabuloso Richie is adding casters to the bottom of our wood stove so we can move it around inside the house. We're so glad we bought this. Geez, like it last two winters ago already now because we only paid $1,300 for it and the price is currently $1,700. That's how much things have changed. The Glacier Bay Buxton toilet we bought, 289 with tax. Now on Home Depot's website, it's $490 without tax. So everything has increased by 50% or more. So we are currently working really hard to try to get the interior done but it's again what comes first what comes second think Abbott and Costello and there it is perfect We're slowly starting to get some of our things out of storage and Richie is really excited to have his toolbox. He was lost without it. So this is what I have going over here now. There's like a 45 degree angle on the wall. That's the only way I know how to make it come together. Something like that. 
And then I have to, I guess I'm gonna have to put the top plates on after it's up there because I don't think there's gonna be any way I could stand these walls up if it's all assembled, especially with this curve on the beam here in this corner. So I have this wall, a little wall here for the closet slash pantry. And then this wall for the pantry slash kitchen. And I'm just gonna try and put it together and stand it up and mark a few pieces of the top plate and put it all together. It's not gonna be that much fun, but we should be able to fix it. What's the worst that could happen? I gotta tear it apart again and do something different? I certainly have never done anything like this before. <laughs> it's gonna be a little tricky making all these pieces line up and be plumb all at the same time. We're trying to make square walls on a round dome. So, anything goes. It's that corner down there. It's gotta line up. This is a tough one. <laughs> trying to figure things out as he goes. Well, as because goes. it's because it's a curved wall, that top plate is super short. And we're trying to build a wall that goes to a curved wall. Straight wall to a curved wall. Challenging. Wall 45, see it? If I Yeah. Mean, right there. I mean, I oh. can live with that. I can live with that. Yeah, it'll be something like this. Mhm. Mm it's really hard to tell. It's very hard to tell. So now you gotta stand up your wall and I'll put a nail in this. <laughs> I'll nail it all together. Okay. I'll take the gap, it's okay. It's not that big of a gap. Well, maybe we could fudge it once we get a level on it and know where the plumb line is, the bubble. Because yeah. this could go this way possibly. Okay, I have a quick question before we even do that because I fear you won't be able to do what you need to do here. And this gets one of those special straps. Will you be able to get in there and hammer it in? Um, we have them. them. That's a double. So it's only going to go on the one side. Right. Oh, we have to do it though. Yeah, can I do that on the... I'm not sure I can hit with a block of wood. Okay. Yeah, I guess I could run them in quick. Nail that I feel there. like we should do that before we can't get in there anymore. It's those little things. They just get you. And that's the challenge it's here. It's time. It takes a lot of time. It too. is. It does. Hanger, we had a whole, whole bunch of trouble trying to get. <laughs> What's yeah. it called? An H3? Yeah, no, I don't know. We H had H2.5. Something, yeah. How did it go? We figured it out. There was only one way it could go. H3R. You said there's directions on this? I don't know. I thought there might be an arrow. There's absolutely nothing. They can only go one way as we nail it. First, I'm going to put one on the bottom. Try not to split my wood. I'm going to go or break up. anything or hit anything. Really, just enough to catch a two by four. So stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I suck. You don't. Strong. Good thing I put it in before we put this wall in. This is why I need you here. Otherwise, I'd be like, I might. Notice how I'm amphibious. I have to work with either arm. Amphibious? <laughs> I know the correct term. What is it? Dexterous. Oh, there you go. Yes, you are. I'm kidding. <laughs> good thing I'm amphibious. Very good, honey. Excellent. There you go. That ain't never coming no, out. No, it's not. You got to do that on all those other beams I, I over there. <laughs> we just discovered another little thing. Right. So, <laughs> Kathy pointed out, not me, because I just want to go all the time. We can't put this other wall up because there's going to be a top plate in the way. And we have to get this floor joist, which is right here. This one here. That goes in on this spot, 
on an angle all the way to this. And we've got two special 30 degree and 60 degree joist hangers. Yes, that need to be nailed in. Yeah, and they get nailed from both sides, just so you know. Right, so it's going to be hard enough to get it in the corner. Yeah. You don't know how you're going to nail that. Right, over there it and doesn't matter, but I'll over here is going to be a challenge. Right, so. And you might have to just use some screws. I probably will. Yeah. With this top plate in the way, I think it there's just no makes it harder even yeah. still. So we're going to Plus, wait. there's another piece that goes to that piece. That comes out straight here. Yeah. On a well, a little bit of an angle though. So anyway, we just want to sort of put it, mock it up temporarily, maybe with a screw or something, just to see if it's plumb and falls where it's supposed to go. How you doing? Still good. I was just squaring this up. I had an extra stud in the corner. I see. <laughs> and uh, can you turn on that vacuum? Yep. I see screws. It looks good. Yeah, I have to square this up. Square this, that, that. <laughs> Shimmy this, that. Got this square. Yeah, that was got tough. This, this square. This Good. Square. You know what I mean? like excellent, excellent. All right, and now you're just going to put these in? Do we have enough of those? We got five more. Oh, yeah, uh, I think we're going to have to buy. Five or six All right, we might have to buy some more. <laughs> So today I'm just working on some boring stuff, continuing from yesterday, bolting down the sill plate and making everything as plumb and square and true as possible. And I'm doing pretty good, but I got this one spot here where I have to accommodate this vent pipe inside the wall. And I was measuring from the outside wall, which is the only real reference point that I have and I need to get this to go about another quarter of an inch. And when I hit it with a hammer, it just sort of springs back. So what I'm gonna try and do is uh, use a clamp. Tool for the job today is gonna be Big Red. <laughs> so what you may or may not know about these clamps is they can also be used as a spreader. Just have to take this off. And what am I going to do? I'm going to reverse it like this and hopefully get it to go back in, right? So now it becomes a spreader. So this side, you know, this clamp's really old and I lost some of the original hardware so I have a little nut and bolt. And we can take this out. Maybe. Come on. And we can reverse it to be like that. Alright, so now this becomes a spreader. So I had to do a little finagling to get it to go through the bottom plate and into the pipe. So I think we're okay. I just got to button up the top plate, button up this beam here, and we'll be good to go. We'll get this thing finished. That's it for today though. Probably still got to trim it. We still have a few more walls to frame on the first floor, but we have a better idea of what to do where the walls are curved. We're just not framing directly to the wall. We're getting as close as we can, and the top plates have to be added later because their lengths are a lot different than the bottom plate. So we're taking it one step at a time, learning as we go, and making the most of it. And we're still loving every minute. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next video. We are 
at the Adirondack Buffalo Company getting buffalo burgers. Yum yum.